So, welcome back, and today it's all about ZBrush and how we can check if our model is compatible with displacement mapping or not. The first question is, what kind of displacement mapping, right? There are two types available in ZBrush. One is called displacement map, in this case, or the palette, and one is called vector displacement map. And we're going to talk about displacement map. This one here has more names like scalar displacement or normal displacement, height displacement, grayscale displacement, and there are probably more names for that. I'm going to call this scalar displacement. Then there's also vector displacement, but vector displacement is different. It's a little better than this here, but there's still place for the regular scalar displacement, right? So, but we won't talk about vector displacement. We only talk about this one here. <coughs> and the question is, is my mesh, my low race mesh, this one here, compatible with my high resolution mesh if I bake this out? With a displacement map, right? And I've done this for this mesh here. I sculpted this quickly in ZBrush. It's not the prettiest mesh. As you can see, there's a lot of stretching going on, and yeah, it's not so pretty, right? As you can see here, a lot of stretching. Anyway, if you look at it from the your distance, like this here, it looks okay, smooth, and quite detailed. So, you know, it's not that bad. <coughs> and that's actually on purpose here, right? A lot of undercuts. Also here, a lot of undercuts, and here, right? Because this is quite hard to recreate with scalar displacement. So, and yeah, I baked it out for this uh, base mesh. That was the original mesh, right? And I brought it into my program. Um, those are the settings here that I've used, as you can see here. And my program is in this case Blender in combination with Cycles, but it would look the same in Renderman or Arnold or something like that. <coughs> so, and here you can see the mesh, right, and the UV layout. Here it is. Very simple ZBrush function. And then I, yeah, rendered it, but let's render the 3D view here. And yeah, there is something going on, as you can see here. A few details, but this here looks really strange. What the heck is this? Uh, yeah, it, uh, it's not correct. and. Here you can see it's not correct, and here you can see it's not correct, and so on. So let me show it to you. I render this, and here it is. Yeah, this is uh, stretchy, right? There's an undercut, but you can't recreate this with this base mesh. And here it's stretchy, here it's stretchy, here it's stretchy, and here. And in here you can't really see this, right? But also here. So the cube is there, but a lot of details are missing, right? So, simple answer, this base mesh does not work for this case, right? For this high resolution sculpt here, because it's too low poly, it won't work. So, you could check the next one, this here, unwrap it again, bake it out again, import it, render it, but it would look almost the same, a little better than this here, but it would all look almost the same, right? A lot of stretchiness in the top part here. <coughs> And the big question is, is there a button for this in ZBrush to check that inside of ZBrush without unwrapping this, without baking something or without exporting it? The answer is yes, there is one button we can use. And I'd like to show it to you with this base mesh. First of all, you go to your um, lowest mesh, what you want to use for your displacement map. In this case, it's the morph target here. And then you go up to Subtool here. And my suggestion would be to duplicate your original mesh or save it out. I would just duplicate it right like this and then you select the new one so you can't destroy your original mesh. And then you go down to project, open the palette, and then there's a button called reproject higher subdiv. And that's the magic button, right? You have to press this button and you will see if it's compatible or not. So let's actually do this, but it will take a while. This mesh has um, 6 million polygons, roughly, so I have to pause this. Okay, but let's just press the button. Here we go. So, it should be finished soon. Come on. Uh, there it is. Come on, one second. Okay, here it is, and it should look familiar to you. If you look at the top part here, right? One, two, and three, three times stretchiness. And if you compare this to the cycle render, you will see it looks the same, right? It looks the same. Stretchy, 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 and stretchy. And uh, yeah, in ZBrush you can 
see this better, right? You can see a lot of stretchiness. And here, inside here, and here, 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 yeah. And here, right? But this here is completely useless for us because, yeah, we don't want this. We want our original script. So let's undo this. And, yeah, you can't use this base mesh, period. You can't use this one. So you have to search for another one. Switch um, to this, just the smooth version. And yeah, it has the same amount of polygons, in this case, 98 quartz. Um, this is a little better because there's more variety in the yeah, polygon. In the polygons, it's because it's a little yeah, um, distorted. And there are more possibilities for the normals to yeah, <laughs> push up or down, but it's not enough. So let's go one up. This has a little, a uh, few more polygons, like a 386, right? It's also quite low, but let's check this one. Maybe this one is better, right? There are more possibilities for the normals. So let's go again to Subtool and reproject higher subdiv. Here we go. So here it is, and yeah, from a distance it looks okay, but I think you can already notice it. Uh, let's zoom a little in. You can see this is yeah, also stretchy, not as extreme as in the other version, but you can definitely see the, a lot of stretchiness going on, and we don't want this, so we can't use this base mesh, right? You can see a one, two, three times stretchiness. In the top part, this looks okay. Also here, in the inside, this looks okay-ish, right? And this here, yeah, stretchy, and there, stretchiness in here, right, and inside here. So we can't use this base mesh, so we have to undo this. This is too low, right? Then you go up, and you could uh, try again, reproject high subdiv, but I can tell you this also won't work. This one has 1,500 points or polygons, and this is still not enough. And then you have to go up, right? This one has like 6,000, a little more, but it's also not enough because it, it's not... Uh, yeah, close enough to the silhouette from the high resolution mesh that's the high resolution mesh and if you go down to this one here you can see it's yeah, it's not the same it's not detailed enough right you can see it's a big difference if you go up right and so you have to go one higher and that would be the yeah base mesh for this high resolution scalp with 25,000 polygons that's quite high but if you you want to use such a mesh here without recreating it, then you would have to use level subdiv level five as a base mesh, right? Delete lower and so on, unwrap it. But yeah, 25,000 polygons is a little high. But let's reproject it and let's actually check that if it's really the correct level, right? So just press the reproject uh, subdiv button again. So here we go. Here it is, and yeah, if you look closer. Right, this looks good. Yeah, looks almost like the non-reprojected version. It's a little different uh, in it. Uh, if you compare this here, so let's quickly change the morph target. And let's go up. And let's compare the original one with the reprojected one. So let's zoom in. Right. And you can see there's just a little bit of difference, but there's no stretching going on on this version here. So this is good. Right, even under here, it's okay. Yeah, and here, as you can see, it looks quite good. So you would have to use this base mesh here, right? But in such a case, I would yeah suggest to recreate the base mesh and reproject it. And I did that. Uh, this is here the reprojected version. Um, that's a Z remesher mesh, right? With a lot of Adaptive, um, how high was it? Where's the zero meter? 57, okay, and adaptive target 1000 polygons. Anyway, you need those polygons, otherwise, you can't recreate this, the, those undercuts here, right? Adaptive is a very good tool for that. The more undercuts, the higher I would set the adaptive setting. Anyway, you could also create it by hand, but yeah, this is good enough here. And this one got 6000 points, so 25% of the other one, and this uh, definitely looks better, right? And yeah, I reprojected a 
high-res details from the other one. And as you can see, it just looks good. No stretching is going on, a better polygon flow, right? Much better. And then I checked it again, sub to here, but it's already the reprojected version. So let's go to the highest one. And as you can see, this is definitely compatible. And it looks much better. So in such a case here, you should recreate your mesh. But yeah, if you want to check your tool or a mesh, just go to the level you want and hit this reproject highest up the button. And that's it. If it's stretchy, then you have to change it or go one level up. If it's not stretchy, then it's OK. So let me show it to you. Right. I imported it here. Yeah. And as a tip, um, you should al always create yeah, the, the rough silhouette from the high resolution mesh with your low resolution mesh. Right. It, it doesn't have to be perfect, but there should be polygons around uh, whatever there is, right? A bump or whatever. As you can see here, a lot of this looks from distance looks like the high res, uh, resolution version, but uh, it's not. And then I rendered it, yeah, displacement map and so on. And as you can see, this one looks perfect. No stretching is going on, and that's yeah, 99.5 percent the original mesh <laughs> as we sculpted in ZBrush or I did. You know, that's it actually. This is the magic button here, reproject high adaptive, search for your level, and then press this button, check the mesh, right? Okay, check all the undercuts, and then if it's fine, you know that's the level you have to use. Okay, thanks for watching, see you on the next video.